Law of Inertia, Part 1. So you might uh, think it's enough to uh, see how things move, and that's done in a number of tutorials that talk about slowing in and out, or path of action and such, but it's also very important and useful in uh, animation uh, to understand why things move uh, the way that they do. Now, the short answer to uh, explaining why things move as they do is um, to understand how forces affect uh, motion. And that's uh, what we'll start doing in, uh, with this uh, tutorial. So, uh, Isaac Newton uh, established uh, three basic laws to explain uh, the relationship between uh, motion and forces. There's a law of inertia that we'll uh, discuss in uh, this tutorial, a uh, law of acceleration and the action-reaction principle that we'll see in some other tutorials. And uh, all of these uh, principles that um, Newton established were in a sense rediscovered by Disney and uh, some of the other early animators when they were studying uh, motion and trying to make their animations more uh, believable, uh, they uh, observe these uh, principles uh, directly. So, so let's see how some of that works with the law of inertia. So we start with a situation where uh, there are no forces. So if we have something like an asteroid uh, drifting through space so that uh, it's away from any gravitational force and such, then the motion is, is very simple. The uh, asteroid will float with a constant uniform motion, so it's going to move in a straight line with a constant speed. Now, uh, if there is a force acting on the asteroid, for example, like a gravitational pull, then in that case the motion is no longer constant uniform motion. Instead we'll have uh, possibly slowing out or slowing in, uh, and also the path of action could be um, changed from a straight line to, uh, to a curve. Now it's, uh, it's rare that we have the situation where there are absolutely no forces acting. Uh, however, it's a very similar situation when forces are balanced. So if we have a pair of forces, let's say we have a flower sack sitting on the floor, and the force of gravity is pulling down on the, fl on the flower sack, however the floor is exerting an upward force, and those two are balanced and the flower sack just uh, sits there. A uh, similar situation with the uh, force of tension if the uh, flower sack is hanging from a rope. Now, uh, you shouldn't uh, imagine from these first two examples that uh, when forces are balanced, that means that there's no motion, uh, because we have a similar situation when we have a bowling ball rolling uh, along the floor. If uh, we don't have uh, much friction, then the uh, floor exerts an upward force on the bowling ball, uh, balancing the downward pull of gravity. So in this case, again, uh, the, those two forces are in balance. So uh, understanding balance of forces is important because uh, the law of inertia, this is also known as Newton's first law, the law of inertia says that an object moves with constant uniform motion until acted on by an unbalanced force. So this tells us the bowling ball rolling along the floor with the upward force of the floor balancing the downward pull of gravity. So then uh, there's no unbalanced force, then the bowling ball should move with a uh, constant speed. Of course, in reality, there's a small unbalanced force, namely uh, friction, and so the ball doesn't roll forever uh, with um, constant uniform motion. It uh, will slow a little bit uh, due to friction, but aside from that uh, asterisk, uh, we have constant uniform motion. Well, here's a, 
an example of where we uh, might see the uh, law of inertia in uh, in practice. So let's say uh, you're standing on a bus and uh, are distracted, and the bus is moving along, but then it comes to a sudden stop. Well, uh, you're moving and you continue moving uh, until there's an unbalanced force that uh, brings you to a stop. So, uh, because you continue moving, you are uh, seemingly thrown forward, but in reality what is uh, happening is you are continuing uh, to move according to the law of inertia. Let's uh, watch a little scene from this rather cartoony uh, live-action film, uh, Shoot'em Up. I don't think I have to tell you that uh, you should not try that yourself. So uh, Now, if we uh, go and uh, look at that stunt where uh, the, uh, the hero in this movie is uh, thrown out of his uh, vehicle into the um, van, uh, well, in reality the stunt uh, was done uh, somewhat slower than would be implied by the uh, speed of the vehicles, but uh, so here we see on these frames the stuntman's actually moving at about 10 miles an hour uh, rather than the 30 or 40 miles an hour that the cars seem to be uh, traveling. Now, uh, it uh, sort of makes sense that they slowed this down, not just for the safety of the, of the stunt person, but also uh, so that uh, the action is slow enough that the uh, audience can can see it and you can you can see what's going on and uh, then the um, uh, stuntman flies into the van at an even slower speed uh, which uh, again is probably intentional by the directors just to make the uh, the scene even more outrageous and uh, and cartoony so uh, but uh, in spite of it being um, distorted, uh, we're still seeing in uh, the law of inertia in practice uh, in this scene with the uh, uh, character being thrown uh, out of the vehicle. Now, uh, as I said, the um, Disney and the other early animators uh, saw this uh, principle in action when they were studying motion, and, and here's a quote from The Illusion of Life. Uh, when a character entering a scene reached the spot for his next action, he often came to a sudden and complete stop. This was stiff and did not look natural. Walt was concerned. Things don't come to a stop all at once, guys. First there's one part, and then another. So, uh, following these ideas, the Disney animators came up with the concepts of follow-through and uh, overlapping action. So uh, here we see in a couple of frames an example of um, follow-through and overlapping action as uh, King Julian is dancing and comes to a sudden stop, but uh, the whole body doesn't freeze, his uh, tail continues uh, moving for a, for a few frames. So uh, this follow-through and overlapping action are just the result of the law of inertia. So uh, the uh, tail continues uh, moving until uh, forces uh, bring it to a stop. And uh, we see this in, in many, many instances in, in animation. If you uh, just uh, watch carefully, you'll see situations where there's follow through. And uh, if you understand the law of inertia, hopefully uh, that follow through uh, and those overlapping actions will now make more sense. So, in uh, summary, the law of inertia says that an object moves with constant uniform motion until acted on by an unbalanced force. Uh, a force is balanced by an equal force acting in opposition, for example, when the floor is pushing you up uh, versus gravity pulling you downward. So, uh, 
the law of inertia is often um, applicable because um, it's often the case where uh, forces like gravity happen to be uh, balanced. Uh, so uh, we see uh, the law of inertia in uh, practice very often and uh, that is encapsulated in the principles of follow-through and overlapping action. Uh, an example being the secondary motion that occurs when a character comes to a sudden stop. Uh, things like the hair, clothing, uh, floppy ears, things like that don't um, suddenly freeze and stop but have a secondary motion in the form of follow-through. Well, this is the first introduction to forces and the law of inertia. We'll uh, continue looking at uh, more of these in the next tutorials and also talk about a closely related topic which is drag in animation. So, see you then.